What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking fall lipless crankbaits. Now, if you've never fished a lipless crankbait or you're an advanced lipless crankbait fisherman, today's video, I have some tips for you to help you guys catch more fish. Let's go. Today I kind of got a mess here for you. I actually wish I could be out on the water, but they're calling for two to three inches of rain today. So uh, what better time to, to change out hooks, change out gear, and get ready for fall fishing time than when it is storming outside. So hopefully in the next few videos we'll get out and be able to fish some of these baits. But today's video, I want to cover as much as I can about fall lipless crankbait fishing. So if you're a beginner fisherman, if you're a fisherman that's never thrown a lipless crank, I have some tips for you. If you're an advanced fisherman, a guy that loves this time of the year and loves throwing a lipless crank, I have some bait choices and some, tech, or some tips to help you guys improve your lipless crank bait fishing. So first off, why a lipless crank? You know, Matt did an awesome in-depth square bill video, I think just last week. He covered a whole bunch of stuff. So it's, I'm gonna kind of feed off of that because right now, as we go through this fall transition into fall, this guy right here, a lipless crankbait, is something that I have tied on 100% of the time. Lipless crankbaits are so versatile. You can fish them in 50 feet of water, you can fish them in less than a foot of water. So today's video, we're gonna talk about shallow grass fishing and uh, a deep ledge or structure fishing. And that is why a lipless crankbait, again, is, is tied on my deck, it's on my deck all the time because it is so versatile and you can fish it so many different ways. Some of the ways I've never done a video on um, you know, we've, we've done so many in-depth videos about this guy right here, the Lucky Craft LV500. You guys know that we absolutely love this bait. We have caught giants on this bait. You know, I think my biggest fish is just under 11 on, on LV500. They catch giants, big, big fish, and they catch a lot of fish, and there's a lot of technique to it. And we've done in-depth videos. We've talked about how to hop them, all that sort of stuff. So I'll, we'll link some of that stuff down below in the video uh, description. But today I want to talk about actually how to fish both deep and shallow and give you some alternative baits to this guy right here because LB500 is a staple in, in both Matt and my arsenals. It is something that we have a ton of, a ton of confidence, uh, a ton of different colors, and a ton of big fish on them. But there are some other players out there that really shine this time of the year, and that's what I want to talk about. So this time of the year, I kind of separate the fish uh, in the lipless category. I, I separate them in two different categories, deep fish and shallow fish. You know, we're coming off of that summer to fall transition, so we still have a lot of grass shallow. So those are going to be my shallow fish. Those are going to be my grass fish, and then out off the ledges, out off your points, down deep, those are gonna be my deep fish. So to get this started, let's talk about the deep fish. We'll cover that real quickly, and then we'll go shallow. We'll talk about some baits to rip through grass, some baits to throw up in six inches, a foot of water to catch those fish that are up super shallow, pushing that bait up against the shoreline. You know, this the last few videos, uh, we've talked about the fall transition, We've talked about where these fish are going, how they're gonna separate, how they're gonna push the bait ball shallow, how what the fish are gonna congregate to uh, deep. So all that will feed into today's video where we talk about how to take advantage of those fish with the lipless crank. So the deep fish, again, the LV500. Now what's special about this bait, well there's a lot of things special about the bait, but uh, the, what separates it from the other uh, shallow lipless crankbaits that I'm going to talk about is going to be the weight itself. This is a three quarter ounce bait. What makes this special when you're hopping, when you're hopping this bait up, it, it's hopping up and it's falling down and it's getting that reaction, that reaction bite, that reaction strike as that bait falls down. You hop it up and it falls, boom, and you, it, just like a jig bite. That is what makes this three quarter ounce LV500 so special. 
A lot of these other lipless crankbaits are a little bit lighter, half ounce, five eighths, and uh, quarter ounce. So that is what really makes this thing shine as a hopping bait and a deep bait. So if you're throwing a lipless crankbait this time of the year and you're fishing deep, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet, this is gonna be the bait that I go to. And I'm not gonna just fire it out there and reel it back. I'm gonna fire this thing out, let it hit bottom, and I'm just gonna lift it up, lift my rod tip up, you know, six to eight inches. Just enough to feel that bait go and then fall down. Just gonna rattle just two or three times and fall down. Rattle two or three times and fall down. That is how I'm gonna fish it. These other baits, complete opposite end of the spectrum. We're gonna be ripping it through grass, we're gonna be burning it across the tops of grass. We're gonna to get to that. But the LV500, if you are fishing deep, like I said, those depths definitely pick up an LV500 because that is, in my mind, in my opinion, the number one lipless crankbait out there for fishing deep water. And like I said, we've caught so many big fish on it. We have so much confidence in it. Uh, real quickly, how we rig these, um, I'll kind of go through the different baits themselves, but uh, any of these lipless crankbaits, it doesn't matter if it's the three quarter ounce Lucky Craft or a TN50, little tiny lipless crank, you want some kind of EWG hook point. Now what that means, we've talked about it in previous videos, most, most hooks have a straight shank, right? So your hooks, EWG tips those points in. So what that allows, two things. When you stick a fish on it with that angle, it's gonna keep that fish, it's gonna be harder for that fish to come unpegged. Also, when you're fishing shallow and you have those hook points turned in and you're coming through the grass, it's just that little, little difference in angle makes them more weedless and easier to get through the grass. So if you're just burning the, you're throwing a rattle trap up super shallow and you're just ticking the, the grass, tip your, your hook points in. So get some EWG, Gamakatsu makes some great ones. Uh, if you're fishing for big fish and you don't want any light wire hooks, you can go with the Owner ST56. Those are our two favorite hooks for lipless cranks. So that is how we rig all of our LV500s, either the Gamakatsu EWGs or the Owner ST56s. Again, this is a 3X hook, a lot stronger hook, so those hooks won't flex on those big fish, especially when you're ripping through grass. Uh, it just comes through a lot better. So that is how we, we rig them. Again, I just cover that real quickly. And then colors, we keep it very, very simple. Again, we're, we're talking deep fish. Typically, I will go three main colors. And if it's muddy water, we'll throw in a fourth, but three main colors. So if the water is somewhat clear, I'm gonna go with a ghost color, a ghost minnow, something like that. If I want to go with a craw pattern, I'm gonna go with some kind of craw pattern. Again, you're fishing these on bottom, you're fishing them deep. So you gotta figure out if your fish are eating shad, they're eating crawdads, go with something red. If you wanna add a little flash, go with something like this, a little American shad, or maybe like a uh, Aurora black, something like that. So those are the three colors, reflective, ghost, see-through, or some kind of craw pattern. Now, this is typically, these two are gonna mimic your bait fish, your shad, uh, thread fins, whatever you're fishing around, this is what it's gonna mimic. Now, if you have a little bit of dirty water, stained water, you can go with a chartreuse shad to really stand out in that dirty water, but typically, those are the three types of colors or the three color selections that I use in all of these for the most part. So that is the deep fish. Let's talk about the shallow fish because again, we're talking about summer transition, we're in that fall transition and there is still a ton of grass and that's really what got today's video uh, going. I'm thinking about wanting to be out there burning a lipless crankbait over grass flats, around grass edges and uh, I'm rigging. I got my hooks, I got my baits, got split rings, everything. Um, so let's talk about the baits for shallow fishing. I have a couple other ones I really want to recommend because honestly, a three quarter ounce lipless crank 
is a little pain in the butt when you're trying to fish through grass. Now, if you're just hopping and you're hopping around that grass and you can reel down and pop it out and rip it out, that is fine. But if you're, if you're reeling this bait, if you want to fish it fast, I tend to stay away from the heavier baits and I go with the lighter baits, the rattle traps, the Jackal TN70, the Strike King Red Eye Shad. So we have some other bait options that I want to share with you guys because they really shine in that shallow water. Again, we're talking less than a foot of water. These fish get so shallow, you wouldn't believe how big a fish get up in less than a foot of water. You know, 10 pounders get up there. They have that bait pushed and they have it like a fence, right? They have that corralled against the shoreline and they'll just grenade it all, all along the shoreline. If you guys have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. A lipless crank is something that you can show them a little different. A lot of people are throwing a square bill. A lot of people are throwing a little swim bait or a flashy swimber. Swimmer, you know, Matt did that square bill video. This is just something that uh, really shines in that scenario. So shallow fish, we got the big fish up, crown the bait. Uh, we don't want a big heavy bait digging down into the grass, down in the mud, in the clay, whatever type of uh, bottom composition you have. So that is where I will go with these baits right here. Now the first bait I wanna talk about, this is actually, this is the Quake 70. This is a six cents bait. And what you'll see in most of these, most of these colorways, except for this guy right here, is either a shad pattern, a ghost pattern, or a crawl pattern. And <clears throat> those of you guys that have seen the six cents stuff, you know their paint jobs are amazing. This is a little scale pattern right here. But when I'm fishing this, and I'm just burning it. Again, you want to be able to ignite these schools of fish. So those fish that have that bait ball pinned up, they're just sitting there and they can feed whenever they want. So you want to trigger that school. You want to either scare those shad or, or get one of those little bass to eat. It doesn't even have to be the biggest bass. If you can get one of those bass to eat as this thing's burning through, now you can pick that school apart. You get that school fired up and a lipless crankbait is something you can get in there fast, work it quickly, get that fish in the boat, and just and put the just hammer down on that school of fish. So again, the Quake 70, it's a little bit lighter of a bait. It's a 5 8 ounce bait versus the three quarter. Again, very, very good uh, color selection, realistic color selection. And they come pre-rigged with that style of hook I was talking about, that EWG. This is a size two, I believe. Uh, very big hooks for the bait, and that is what I like. I love having the bigger, bigger hooks when that bait is moving quickly. You know, if it's if you're fishing something slow on bottom, you want it to look as natural as possible. But when you're truly reaction fishing and you're firing this up there on the flat, and you're just tick, you're burning it as fast as you can, and you're just ticking that grass and pausing and burning, burning, burning. You're not letting them get a good look at it, so the big hooks don't matter as much. But when they do eat it, you got a lot more, a lot more gaff there to get those fish to the boat. So a 5 8 ounce Quake 70 is a perfect bait to throw up shallow. Now when I, when I talk about shallow, I've, I've mentioned firing it up there and just burning it back. Now there's different ways to fish it. You know, like I said, we've done in-depth videos of hopping. If I am hopping the bait, I am hands down going with the, the three quarter ounce, the Lucky Craft LB500. If I'm firing up there and I'm just burning and ticking grass, that's where this guy shines. Another way to fish him is actually ripping him through grass. So burning it, letting it get in the grass, and then ripping it through. And as that bait rips through the grass, those big bass just react, right? They just react to that bait ripping out of the grass and they shoot up and eat it. They don't have a lot of time to really dissect the bait and get a look, a good look at it. So again, you're truly power fishing. We'll talk about gear in a little bit because the stuff that we recommend for deep hopping a lipless is gonna be completely different than now what we're talking about fishing around grass. So the Quake 70, great bait, has good sound to it. I don't know if you can, uh, LB500, Quake 70. So sounds pretty good. The other guy right here is gonna be the TN70. This is the Jackal. Very good color selection. Jackal makes great baits. Uh, again, this is the TN70. Little different sound. Little bit louder. 
The TN70 uh, is another bait. It's, it's, a, it's a 5 8 ounce bait. So again, a little bit lighter than the Lucky Craft, but it's, uh, it's just another winner. We've had days deep fishing it where the LV doesn't work as good as the, as the TN70 and vice versa. So that is why I have so many different types of lipless cranks because every day is a little bit different. The fish can be finicky. They could want something less rattled. They could want something with a, just a solid one knocker. Uh, it totally depends on your fishery. But this guy right here, the TN70 is another winner. And, and you can fish this deeper. You know, you can fish these deeper than six inches of water like I was talking about. You could actually fish them out 10, 12 feet. They will fall a little bit slower. But if you're fishing those deeper grass lines and you're wanting to rip out the grass, these guys are winners. The last bait that I want to talk about, and then we'll go into some, some uh, different styles of baits, is going to be this guy right here. This is the Strike King Red Eye Shad. Now, what I really like about this bait, look at the size difference. This is a three quarter ounce bait. This is a half ounce bait. So you get a larger profile. You can see here, I went ahead and rigged a red hook on the back, ST56 on the back, or red hook on the front, EWG gummy, and then uh, ST56 owner on the back. But you can see the size difference. It's a lot bigger bait, a lot bigger profile in the water, and a lot different sound. This bait comes in two, it comes in the, the normal and it comes in the two taps. This is the normal. Two tap. So a lot deeper sound. It kind of has that one knocker sound like a square bill, like the biggie. And again, when you fire this thing up or you're ripping it through the grass, uh, this guy right here is just a different profile, a different sound, and it has really put big ones in the boat, uh, especially the last couple of years for me. So this is the Red Eye Shad. So those are the baits. You know, you guys, you, you beginners that have never thrown a, uh, a lipless crank before, some of these can be kind of pricey. The Strike Kings, um, I don't know, six or seven bucks. Some of these get up to like 15, 16 bucks. <clears throat> One thing I will say, we've talked about them for years. The Cotton Cordell, the, the, the Spot, the Super Spot, and the, the Rattle Trap, the Bill Lewis Rattle Trap. Fairly inexpensive baits in the category and they work. Again, you can get them in that lighter. You can get them down to quarter ounce if you really wanted to. But uh, if you have never thrown a lipless crankbait, you can get these things for fairly cheap. They're fairly inexpensive. You will want to change out the hooks and split rings. But this guy right here, another half ounce bait, real high pitched sound, but it's got a larger profile, lighter weight, so it doesn't get buried in the grass like the heavier baits. And when you can, when you can fire this up there and just burn it along and you want this thing just tuck, just tick in the tops of the grass, to get those reaction bites. And when you hit the grass, you want to rip it. Burn, 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 pause, hits the grass, rip. You want to work these things very, very fast. So a seven to one burner is gonna be key. But again, that little guy right there, fairly inexpensive. So if you guys have never tried a lipless crankbait, give it a shot, you guys will be impressed with these. I mean, Matt and I, we still throw these today because they work different sounds. And it's, it's you know, everybody in the, if everybody in the world is throwing let's say this guy right here, and you come up behind him with a lighter bait and a different sound bait, it, it all changes. You know, it's, it's, the fish can be very finicky some days. It all depends on pressure. It depends on how many guys have found that school of fish. Um, but all of these baits, de depending on the day, depending on the situation, catches big ones. So now that we, one more real quick, you uh, Northern guys, if you guys haven't tried this guy right here, this is the Damiki Trimmer. This is uh, a, a really special uh, color for you smallmouth guys. This is a light green. It's, it's a call, I think it's called Soft Shell Cross, something like that, don't quote me, but uh, we'll link it down below in the video description. But that color right there is a, it's a special bait on your smallmouth fisheries, especially up north. So definitely check those out. But the Damiki Trimmer, again, another bait that uh, is in our lineup and, um, Oh, we're tackle junkies. We really are, but they have their place. So, so we've talked about lipless. We've talked about baits. We've kind of talked about the shallow fish. Definitely more than we've talked about the deep fish because I feel like we've 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 covered the deep fish in so many different so many different videos. But the shallow fish. What I, in my mind right now, if it wasn't raining and I was out on the 
if it wasn't flooding right now, and I was out on the boat, I'm going shallow. I'm talking a foot of water to six feet of water. And I am looking for outside grass edges. I am looking, if I am, well, out here on Chick, I'm looking for current seams. I'm looking for current breaks with grass ed lines right next to the current. But reservoir fishermen, same thing. Look for that outside grass line and uh, look for little lanes. You can fire this guy up there shallow and just get to burning. The two ways that I like to fish them shallow, again, I've already talked about it. Burn, 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 burn. Uh, as you deflect or as you hit that structure, that grass, whatever you're fishing around, pause, pop, rip, go. The other way is going to let it uh, actually get hung up in the grass and rip it through. Now with that technique, you're going to need totally different gear than we would recommend for the hopping bait. So I'll get to that in just a second. But just to refresh, Lucky Craft LV500, you deep guys have at it. It is a phenomenal bait and catches giants. Shallow fishermen, go with that Quake 70, the TN70, the Rattle Trap, or the uh, Red Eye Shad. Those are all winners. And like I said, some are fairly inexpensive. Some get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more pricey. All of them, I change out of my hooks. That's what I'm doing today. I'm changing out my hooks again. Uh, either Gami EWGs or Owner ST Fix 56s, that 3X hook, are going to be my two go to hooks for all of these. One other thing I want to talk to you guys about before we talk gear is going to be blade baits. Now, I typically Hmm. <laughs> Winter time is usually what you think about blade baits, right? Silver buddies, um, just slow, methodical, quiet fishing. You know, the bite is slow, the, the, the lake's cold, the water's cold, the fish aren't very active. That's typically what people think about blade bait fishing. Well, I'm here to tell you that right now you can go catch them on a blade. If everybody in front of you is throwing something with a rattle, try going stealthy and go with something without a rattle. You know, you can burn this, you can rip it through the grass, you can hop it. Very, very universal bait. This is the Damiki Vault. Now, a tip for you. A lot of these blade baits come, this is the key burn right here. These are my two favorites. Damiki Vault and Jackal Keyburn. You can see those little hooks right here. What I do with all of my blade baits, even my little TN50s, I change out the hooks. Now again, we're fishing for big fish. If you want to fish stock stuff, that, that's go for it. But I don't want to be, you know, I don't want you to have heart, heartache, heartbreak if you stick a PB and you lose it because the, the hooks bend out. A lot of these little finesse blade baits come with really light wire hooks. I changed mine out to, I changed the split rings out to either number twos or number three hyper wires. And then these guys right here, this is the owner Zo wire. This is the STX 38. It's a uh, heavy plus. So it's a more stout of a, it's, it's, it's a little bit stronger than a, a traditional ST 36. Um, but they come in really small sizes. They come in that Zo wire, that really strong stuff. It's got that, that coating on it, makes them super slick. It allows that hook to penetrate a lot easier. But I put these on all of my little blade baits and I haven't lost a big fish yet. So if you guys throw blade baits, definitely check out these hooks. They can be a little pain to put on. You know, you're dealing with little tiny split rings you're dealing with little tiny areas to move around. So definitely get yourself some smaller split ring pliers. But if you guys like throwing blade baits or you like throwing lipless crank baits and you haven't tried a blade bait, fish them in every location that you would traditionally fish your, your lipless cranks and you'll be surprised with what uh, reacts to the, the stealth version of a lipless. Again, these come in different sizes, different weights. So you can play around with your fall. If you're an offshore fisherman, you want that fall, that quick fall, 
go with a half ounce or a three quarter. If you're a shallow fisherman, go with that lighter weight and rip it through the grass. Okay, so that is the baits. That is all the baits that I wanted to talk about. Those are all the baits that I, it's not all the baits I throw, but the majority of what I throw. And like I said, they have a, a purpose and a place for all the different um, situations I end up in. Again, LV500, if you could only get one, go with that guy right there. You won't be uh, disappointed. They catch a lot of fish and big fish. If you're a shallow fisherman and you're just strictly ripping through grass, go with one of those lighter uh, options that I gave. So we've talked, about, we've talked about hooks, we've talked about split rings, what to change. The only other thing we need to talk about is gear. When we are throwing an LV500, it doesn't matter if we're just casting out and reeling back or hopping, we throw the Loomis uh, IMX Pro 845 CBR. It's a crankbait rod. It's got a moderate fast action, so it loads deeper down into the blank. It's uh, it's not really a noodle. It's still a five power rod, so you can, you can really lay into them, but that is not the rod that you're gonna wanna use if you plan on burning this stuff and ripping it through the grass depending on how much grass you are fishing. If you're just fishing through sparse grass, you can get away with that. If you're going a little bit more than that, definitely step up into like a medium heavy crankbait rod. But if you're truly ripping this stuff through heavy grass, really looking for that reactive bite. I mean, I'm talking about ripping. You know, this thing's just ripping through, all the grass is, is blowing off, it's falling, you're ripping, ripping. You're gonna want something like a, a medium heavy or a heavy jig rod. Something that has enough backbone that when you're ripping this stuff through, the rod's just not bending, right? You want that thing to be stout enough to have enough backbone to rip that bait through and let it fall. If you're just burning the baits and just taking the grass, you can get away with a lighter, lighter action rod. But if you are truly ripping through the grass, definitely go with a, a, uh, a more stout of a rod. So whatever jig rod you have, either a medium heavy or even a heavy, depending on, on uh, the grass, uh, definitely try throwing uh, those baits on that. Now, with that said, make sure, if you're ripping through grass, make sure you go with that heavier, if you're ripping through grass with that heavier rod, make sure you go with that heavier hook. Again, you don't want to throw light wire hooks on a heavy jig rod because as that fish comes up, you're just gonna bend out hooks and you're gonna have a disaster. So match your tackle to the, the way you're gonna be fishing these lipless cranks. But again, this time of the year, fall time is lipless crankbait time. It's square bill time, it's uh, swim bait up shallow time, but 100% of the time I have a lipless crankbait tied on because super universal. If I am out and I see a fit, you know, school of fish down in 25 feet on bottom, I can fire this LV out and just hop it. If I am up shallow and I'm throwing a frog but they don't want to commit, they don't want to come up to the surface but they have the bait pinned, I'm going shallow and I am ripping or burning uh, a lipless crankbait. You know, the, the difference between a lipless and a square bill is just action. These have so much, so much uh, tighter wobble than a square bill and you don't have, it, they just swim different, right? So Square bill is going to have the, the bill on the face, on the, on the front of the, of the bait, and it's going to kind of dive down and plow more. Uh, these just come through the water a lot quicker, in my opinion, and um, a lot tighter. So you can get that, uh, get that real quick, real fast reaction bite to this bait just, you know, zipping across. But uh, that is it, guys. That is lipless cranks. Again, I am just rigging up baits, rigging up hooks, switching out split rings, and wanted to do a, uh, an in-depth kind of lipless, fall lipless crank uh, video for you because it is go time to be throwing a lipless crank. Again, keep the, keep the color simple. If you, have, if you have bait fish in your, in your fishery and you're trying to mimic a shad, go with either a ghost or some kind of reflective bait. If you are fishing bottom or you're fishing shallow and you're trying to mimic uh, uh, a crawdad or a crayfish, go with some kind of craw pattern. That is it. You guys up north, definitely check out this soft this uh, craw pattern from Damiki because that is a winner. And definitely don't be a sleeper on the blade baits. Again, 
They're so much fun to, to throw. You can get away with throwing them on a little bit lighter rods and reels, uh, but always have this tied on as a backup plan or at least have it in your box as a backup plan because sometimes they will not eat the loud, the loud stuff, but they will eat the silent stuff. And you'll be surprised with um, <laughs> with the fish that are there that aren't that aren't uh, reacting to this. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. I'm sure I missed something, but again, update your, your tackle, your hooks, your split rings, stick with those colors, stick with these baits, and uh, you guys will have fun this time of the year. Don't, don't get overwhelmed if you're having a hard time you know, getting this through the grass. Uh, if, if, if you were struggling getting your bait through the grass, use a different bait. But look for that sparse grass, look for those channels, those lanes to make your cast, and those fish will be sitting right on the edge, and as this thing comes flying by, they'll uh, react. So give one of these lipless crankbaits a try this, this time of the year, and I think you guys will uh, in, enjoy the success. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments section, because I'm sure I covered a lot of the stuff, but I'm sure I missed something. But uh, get out there, guys. It is officially fall time. I think just a couple days ago, it is officially fall time. The temps are dropping, at least out here. I'm sure up north, you're already ahead of us. Out west, uh, we'll be back soon out there filming, but a little bit warmer still out there, but it's coming. So take these tips, take these, uh, these little tweaks on, these on this technique, and I, I think you guys will really enjoy it. But uh, if you guys learned something, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, turn on notifications, and uh, you guys will be alerted to all the videos that we do because sometimes we do more than just three a week. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.